Dystopia tonight. Tonight. Hi. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Oh, man. I hope you're doing better than me, dude, because I've literally been do- doing that oh. free. Like, like I know the name of the album. I know, I know what I'm talking about, and I literally have been blanking out lately. I don't know what it is. I wasn't gonna tell you, you know. Just, <laughs> I was just gonna let it slide, you know. Whatever. I appreciate. <laughs> no, I, I need to be, I need to be reprimanded so that it, so that it doesn't happen anymore. I don't know what it is, man. I'm trying to eat. How are you doing, by the way? Are you doing all right after the whole pandemic thing? Did you survive okay? Did you? What pandemic? Uh, <laughs> there's a pandemic? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. No, it's actually been uh, okay. Uh, you know, it's forced me to just, uh, you know, you, I think everybody, it's forced everybody just about to become creative with yeah. what you have as opposed yes. to what you are used to, you know? And, and uh, so, yeah, so there's been uh, the band, one of the bands I'm in, the weaklings, we, we did a number of songs, a number of tracks where everybody did it from home because of this right. modern era of digital technology and, you know, and so home recording and stuff like that. So that, that's actually, and it's forced you if there were like little nooks and crannies, about uh, how to use the gear that you have, uh, yes. y- it kind of forces you to kind of figure it out, you know. So th- uh, there's been a lot, you know. So the Weeklings have released records, you know, singles, and um, yeah, April Fool. And- I-, I love the new one, April Fools, that you guys put out, and yeah. uh, and and I saw some of your lives. That was the coolest thing, I think, because you musicians. I don't know if you guys were like prepared ahead of time or what, but it, you guys really kind of figured out what to do first because that was before comedians did before any of us were like before i even had a podcast to keep myself sane uh you guys were doing live streams on on facebook and um instagram and stuff and it was it was just nice to see and hear like you know music familiar songs and see familiar faces and stuff so that was awesome i'm sure we weren't the first uh but i was surprised at how many musicians, how many people were asking, how did you guys do that? You know, right. how you, you, you could see a video where we're all sitting in different places and, and as if it was like some miracle and, and, <laughs> uh, and really, I, I mean, it, it, it all came down to, and I, it might've been my idea, but the click track, you know, as long as everybody says, okay, we're good, this song is 120 beats per minute. Right. Um, and you know, I would record myself playing and singing mm-hmm. along with 180 at, at 180 beats per minute. And then I pass it along to the drummer who played the drums as long as he had a click going that he knew that it was 180, 120 beats per minute, whatever. And so it seemed to work out. It's that, yeah, that was good. That so also, you know, I also did a thing where every day, like about two weeks into the pandemic, Mm-hmm. Every every day I challenge myself to okay record yourself singing a song. Uh mm-hmm. and I did that every day for 100 days. They're all on YouTube and um th- it was a it was a cool challenge. Uh and after 100 days I said this is enough of that. But uh <laughs> yeah cuz so just a lot, you know, it becomes like yeah. It's- I, I like starting projects, but you know, a hundred days into it, I'm like, I'm, I'm done, you know? So I, that is so know. much better than when I did. I'm not even this. I wish this was a joke, but I started, um, a thing called t-shirt Tuesday. This is, I, I could have been, I, I really wish I could have told you like, yeah, I, I wrote a five jokes every day for a hundred days. No, I did not. Yeah. I yeah. sat in a fetal position. Um, and then I, but I did t-shirt Tuesdays, which by the way, did, it got some traction, but not a ton, but I have like a, an arsenal full of t-shirts, band t-shirts. And I would just put wow. one on and, you know, uh, talk about where it was, you know, where I got it or wherever the hell it was. And then other people would send theirs in. And then literally like, uh, 
all the BLM stuff started and it was blackout Tuesday. And I was like, I can no longer do this on Tuesdays oh. <laughs> where yeah. I, where I felt like I could not continue that, uh, which was, you know, just to keep me busy anyway. But, yeah. um, yeah, it was, it was weird, but I felt like everybody was kind of clinging to something at that point, trying to figure out, uh, you know what to do but that's awesome the click track thing i had no idea that's i'm, I'm like i feel like i have a childlike wonder about that because that's amazing that you guys are able to pull that off it's uh yeah you know and, and like i said we we all all the members of the weaklings have uh digital uh workstations at home you know mm. record audio digital audio workstations and um right you know and i, I really thought it was i prefer it to going into the recording studio with everybody now. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's, it's kind of changed the way it's like, I could just sit here and work out my part and try things. And, you know, instead of there being a committee, which is what bands are, they're like committees. And right. Winston Churchill said that a, a camel is a horse designed by committee. And that's, I think that's a really <laughs> true statement because a committee can like really screw, screw up a, a you know, a singular vision but in any case um uh, right so if it, it, you know if it came to a playing a bass line for a song mm -hmm. um i'm like uh, okay I'll, you know let me just sit here and do it and work on my bass part solo by myself and uh mail it off email it and uh let nice. the other guys add to it so you feel more creative freedom doing it that way somewhat yeah yeah that's awesome I feel like that's a, that's a, I mean, there's very few silver linings and I've talked about this on the show before, but like there is very few silver linings of like the pandemic and COVID, but the few that there are seem to be, you know, creatively beneficial or just even being more aware of what's going on in the country, that kind of a thing too. And, um, I mean, for comedians and stuff, it's like, I don't know if it's the same for musicians either, but kind of seeing, um, these for us seeing like these comedy clubs and these places kind of oh, yeah. kind of um i don't I, i'm gonna say crumble even though that's a harsher word than i probably should use but you know without us kind of puts things in perspective because we're like wow they don't you know because comedians and musicians like artists survived as best as we could but i mean i bought gear i might like you said people started buying equipment and buying stuff and, and trying to figure out how to uh, create, whereas the people that usually wind up screwing us over couldn't survive. So it, <laughs> it puts, yeah. puts things in a little bit of perspective, I think. Yeah, I feel sorry for them. But uh, is that how yeah. you started this this show? Yeah, yeah, because okay. I, I couldn't tour anymore. I couldn't go out and perform. And um, a bunch of us started that. We have actually like an entire network. So I think you were on another show. You were with uh, Justin Gonzalez at one point. Um, who's on our our channel or whatever? Um, but uh, yeah, we had we had started. A buddy of mine texted me on Thanksgiving, and was just like, "Hey, do you want to live stream and and go on and you know shoot the shit with some comics or whatever?" And uh, we wound up doing that. And then I had the idea for the podcast, um, and I just called it Dystopia Tonight because every day felt like a different level of dystopia we had reached. Um, and then I just started talking to people I liked. Well, that's fun. Yeah, and now, is so this technically uh, is this a podcast? It's not, but let me ask you this because I've never asked to get. Well, I don't. I don't know what to call it. I mean, it, yeah. I do take the audio from it, and it goes on Apple Podcasts, and it's oh, popular okay. on there and Spotify. But um, I like doing it on video. I post it on like YouTube and stuff, and this is live. So no, it's not. I, I don't know. I was just talking to my producer about it, and I was like, it's not really a podcast. Uh, yeah, I don't know the lingo, but I do want to tell the people who are listening to the podcast via Apple Music that we are both totally naked. <laughs> yes, that is uh, that is in uh, Glenn's writer. I was <laughs> alarmed at the time, but I feel very comfortable right now. He's very. I'm not doing idiot. any no clothed interviews from now on. It's like right. Thing. Yeah. That was another benefit to the pandemic. Glenn was like, I'm not wearing clothes anymore. I'm done. I'm done being restricted by man. That started long before then, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you, uh, are you looking forward to going back out at all? Or do you feel like uh, you're just going to uh, live stream the rest of your stuff? <laughs> uh, you know what? Things are starting, starting to open. I don't know if stand up is going this way, but uh, um, you know, I've, played a, a few uh limited 
capacity uh, performances now. And uh, nice. what, you know, what they do is they, they, they make sure that the tables are eight feet apart and that nobody uh, leaves a table uh, without a mask on. And, you know, there's these requirements. And if the place holds 4,000, mm -hmm. they'll only, they'll only take 1,000. You know, it's, it's been a uh, 25% capacity. Um, so uh, there, there are a few of those going on and more and more actually. And, um, and some places, some outdoor places, uh, figured out a way, you know, to deal with that better than the indoor venues. Um, and there's, you know, there's a place, the, uh, Camp Basie theater in Red Bank, they mm -hmm. figured, they figured out a way to rent outdoor space and throw concerts, you know, not in park wow. lots, but uh, uh, in parks, let's say, you know? Right. Right. So they, they got creative, you know? And so there's, there's some of that. And uh, I, everybody in the booking world is now talking about, uh, How's the summer? Is this, are, are they going to lift the restrictions by the summer? Right. And, you know, it's like every day I hear a different thing. And, um, you know, now there's the, the latest word I heard is that people are thinking September, you know? Wow. So, I, yeah, but it's all, you know, it's all guesswork. I, I have yeah. a, one, another band I'm in called the orchestra, which is uh, former members of electric light orchestra. And we, we have a gig, mm -hmm booked in spain mm -hmm. uh in july or august right um you know and and with all of these types of things it's like well what if it gets canceled spain yeah. has they've got their own government they've got their own medical professionals they've got and then i i, I found out that every township or whatever it is every community has their own rules not unlike every state having different right rules here so it's so we're gearing up and you know um you know we bought the plane tickets and and all of that and it could very easily just get yanked if if uh the covid cases spiked yeah yeah and that's that's the same thing kind of the stand-up community is going through too is like everybody that learned from the last year to do stuff outside as you know um i know stand-up in new york i'm, I'm my first gig back in the city is going to be on the 26th of may i'll be in greenwich village um and that's outside and then stand up new york is the same oh. way and and all that other stuff they they actually found places that, like they would just do stand up new york but in central park so they'd be in the park or you know wherever um a couple of them have actually just rented the city block and like so they're just outside doing that kind of shit um it's got to be a really different way to approach stand up it's it's so different and it's so like i mean you know how it is. it is stand up supposed to be done you know in a room low ceiling everybody facing the stage yeah. the laughter is supposed to hit you and when you you know when you do it outside it's it's everything's different it's the same thing with doing like um i i didn't wasn't big on the zoom shows i mean i did a few of them and most of them were just for charity or whatever and they were they went they went well they were fine but i hated it because this one's got his camera off. Right. This one's got it. You know, the other one's getting up and moving around the room. And um, we did one where uh, one, the husband and wife were on the couch. The wife was watching the show and the husband was clearly watching sports on the TV because it was just the <laughs> screen was flashing. And I'm, I'm just like, I mean, I, it was fun. You know, I commented on it or whatever, but it was one of those things where you're like, oh, this fucking blows. Yeah. Um, but no it's. I mean, that, it's weird. That, it's funny that you say September because most of the gigs I'm lining up are people are trepidations about the summer. So it's all like uh, September, October, November, December. Like that stuff's filling up, but summer is like hit and miss. Ah, yeah, yeah. As it should be, I think you know. But but no, I'm getting. It's, what do you think getting... about Asbury? I mean, uh, I'm I'm uh, after I did the uh, Band Aid thing. Um, I'm kind of in talks with like doing stuff, uh, booking stuff at the wonder bar, maybe doing like a residency thing there through the summer, which I feel like feels safe. And then, um, also might be doing, uh, booking the, um, comics at, uh, stone pony summer stage. So I've got like friends like David tell and those guys or whatever, and I might have them come out, but I, but also that's on like, it's being talked about, but it's being talked about. Like, we don't know. 
So yeah. I have no idea whether it's going to happen or not. But do you think Asbury will be okay? Or uh, I, I think the Stone Pony itself is being cautious. Okay. But uh, I know the Wonder Bar, she's doing a great job over there. Nice. Um, so that's going. I, and I know they're opening a new venue like above the Iron Whale. It's, a, it's like above the boardwalk. Oh, wow. And, and they rebuilt something that was there like 70 years ago. And, right. And it's, it's, it's an outdoor amphitheater. And, and uh, so that ought to be interesting. Sweet. Um, yeah, so there, there, there are places to play in Asbury, and it feels like there's something going on. So, you know, we'll see. I think, like I said, I think so far the word that I've gotten is that the the Stone Pony is being well. You know why? Because they don't do tables, right? So when you do standing, it's hard to make sure that people are, are, are socially distancing. Yep. Now. And they're going to be drinking and it's going to be summertime at the shore yeah, it's and hard. it's going to be fucking nuts. It's like the, um, I'm wondering what they're going to do with uh, they I think they canceled the see here now festival, right? Uh, I think they did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and that sure. was, and that's, that's a bummer because that was like, we, right. I, I don't think we've, I mean, as far as I know, when I was a kid, man, we didn't have anything like that down here. That was awesome to see. Yeah. Jersey getting some kind of huge festival. I always wonder why they never did anything like that. Like I, I always wonder why we didn't have a giant venue over in Seaside. Like that's a place, especially after the fire and after Sandy and shit, yeah. where they should have built some kind of amphitheater, you know, to yeah. have like uh you know, to just fucking have shows and have people come in and bands come in and blow it out. My, it's about money. Choice. It's all about money. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I know it's crap. It's, it's just kind of crazy. So when, so I got to ask you, when did you, you know, when did you start initially getting into music and stuff? Cause a lot of the people I talked to either, you know, somebody gave them an instrument when they were a kid and it went from there or, but were you always interested in music and songwriting or did you have like a different, uh, something you wanted to do? No, uh, I kind of dabbled in a couple of different things, but, mm -hmm. um, Music was always, you know, just something I, I was drawn to, and I got around it better than the other stuff. I, I wanted, I was playing with the filmmaking, and I, I but I'm oh. talking about, I'm talking about being 12 years old though. But um, right, I, I was into painting, <laughs> I was okay. into filmmaking, and I was into music, and um, and it was just, it just turned as it turned out, it was just easier for me to just pick up a guitar and make up a song than it was for me to go, to make a, a film even though i made a couple of experimental films as a kid that right were not very good but um it was fun and um yeah yeah and painting uh you know i i never really got past a certain point but um but music it was just kind of like you know i loved it and and then I was very stubborn about it i just refused to accept that i was going to do anything else in my life and um, so I just stayed with it. And, and, you know, the older I get, the more I question that um, that, that was the wisest choice because I, I, it's not like I'm extra, I'm not a genius, you know, I'm not like, I, and I, as a musician, you encounter people that are just like, oh my God, this guy was born to play that instrument or, or this girl right. has, this, has this voice that's like, unbelievable or something, you know, like uh, at this point I realized it's like, well, Glenn, yeah, you didn't really come out uh, a, a prodigy or anything, you know, it, but it wow. was this, this stubborn uh, belief in myself and music that gave me the career I've had, which is not, I'm certainly not a household name, but I've got, I've, you know, I've done a bunch of stuff <laughs> Yeah. So and I'm still living. I've ma made my life's living, uh, making music. Yeah. And that's awesome. And something to be, you know, uh, obviously crazy proud. Of. I was going to say, you're not, I mean, uh, anybody that I told that you were, you know, coming on was super excited. They knew who you were, you know, they knew you were part of the, I mean, it could, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. Cool. And so I, I mean, uh, but, um, is that something that you think is, uh, just part of being a, performer though in general that at some point you're just like 
um, you're kind of questioning your legacy at some point? Do you feel like, like you've always thought like, like that? Or do you think oh, you genuinely, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I probably, you know, I, you know, you get anybody that has a job where you, you get up in front of audiences or you produce art or, or whatever it is and you, mm -hmm. and you show it or it's to be listened to by an audience you know, I, I, I think you do do a certain amount of, you know, soul searching and am I am I cool enough? Am I badass enough? Am I original enough? Am I talented enough? You know what I mean? Wow. And that I, stayed I, with you even when you were like in sticks and stuff and you were doing, you know, having all those tours and concerts and stuff. And when you did Paul McCartney and wrote for Patti yeah. Smith, like, was that was that yeah. always there when you were younger too? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, just self, you know, it's, it's, it's like you're looking in the mirror, but then you start looking in the the mirror of the media, you know, it's just like, sure. how do I look in this headshot? And, you're right, and then, right, right. You know, and how does my voice sound if I interview in a lower voice or whatever stupid yeah. thing <laughs> that you go through, you know, I, I think people, which is not, you know, when, when you're, a, you know, when you have an office job, you don't, I, I guess you don't think about that. Presentation. It's weird that you... Presentation. That's what. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny that you've been saying that. I was talking to uh, Judy Gold. Do you know Judy Gold? Yeah. Mama. Yeah. So I was talking to her yesterday and we were talking about being in some kind of a funk almost where it's like, we were like, is it post COVID shit? What's going on or whatever. But almost uh, exactly what you were just saying, where you're looking at yourself through the media landscape and you were like, if I had a normal job, none of that shit would <laughs> enter my brain. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. And then, it, but I've been thinking about that to lately too, where I'm like, I'm tired of the social media presence I'm tired of making sure a fucking picture's posted and what did I say in this interview and how, you know, it, it, it's, but I love, I mean, I like, you, you know, you love, you said you love doing what you're doing. I love doing what I'm doing too, but sometimes I'm like, maybe I should farm. <laughs> uh, Isn't that, that weird? Be, that, like, and, and, no, that, that you, you might have, you might be onto something there. You know I mean? <laughs> what I'm asking, I brought you on here to ask you if you'd start a farm with me. That's all I, <laughs> I figure we're both naked. Why not just, <laughs> why not just start a farm? If we're yeah. growing pot, I'm in yeah. because that's going to happen. Yeah. Any day now, you know? Um, yeah. Can we please? That's so great. I love that yeah. this is coming together. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I think um, I, you're a lot younger than me. You're, you're young enough to be my son. <laughs> um, but I will say, um, I see it myself mm -hmm. as, you know, uh, I have a daughter that works for vice and she made a video oh, about wow. influencers mm -hmm. and this, right. this cult of influencers is something that I, you know, I'm just like, wow, I don't relate to it. I think yes. it's such, such bullshit. I it's well, but it's, it's not for me. Nobody's yeah. influencing me that way, you know, <laughs> you know, this whole idea that people who they don't really, they become famous for not doing anything, but being right. famous, you know, that's hard to grasp yeah. for somebody that in my case, I lived through the sixties and the seventies and it was like these, you know, seeing people invent themselves artistically, um, yeah. you know, so it's, it, yes, it's, it, it's hard for me, and I I always write it off as a generational thing, but right. there you are, you're you're bitching about it yourself, I guess. You know? Yeah, I don't I don't know what that is either. And some of my friends, you know, either I don't know if it's their, them trying to cl cling to uh, staying somewhat hip and, and relevant because I will bitch about it, and they'll be like, "Well, it's just because you're just old, you you got an old mindset or whatever." And I'm like, "Fuck you, dude!" Like when I was, I, I hated this shit growing up when I was in high school, and I kind of saw the trajectory that it was going in because, I mean, like you said, you don't know who they're influencing, and I wonder the same thing too because it's, I'm supposed to be on the cusp of that age bracket, right? I'm technically a millennial, unfortunately, which I hate even admitting, right? Um, but it, it, it's just a huge bummer that I'm not in like a better generation bracket, <laughs> like. <sighs> Like I wish it. Did I just freeze? I may have frozen. I don't no, know. no, we hear you. Uh, no. Oh, you do. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I feel like I was in a. You know, I could have been in a cooler one, but I'm not. But I also grew up. Um, <laughs> the grass is always <laughs> greener, my friend. You right? Know? Do you feel? Yeah. Would you like? So there's now. Now we're, I'm trying to. Okay, well, I'm thinking about two points here. One of them is that I wonder. You know, 
when um, they were always talking about how a generation can kind of turn over um, a product. You know what I mean? Like there was the Coke and Pepsi. Like are the are they the same as the commercials that they used to pitch to youth? Or like the beer commercials that were like tap the rock, you know, and everybody was fucking and, you know, naked <laughs> and whatever. And I wonder if the influencer thing is just that, you know what I mean? Like if it's just, are they really influencing people or is it just better a version of a commercial that people try Marketing. to use to sell on MTV? Yeah. And I don't know because, you know, they, they, the media makes it sound like it's way more important than it should be, especially politically or you know, uh, culturally, like they're like, Oh, this new TikTok," And it's people I've never heard of before. Like it's TikTok users that are going viral. And suddenly, you know, they, they start purchasing something and they're like, this is going to be big. And I'm like, I've never heard of them or the product. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be impressed by it. Yeah. But a lot of those people do become very, very successful as well. Yeah. So yeah, they come become rich. Yeah. It's, it is, it's the currency, you know, of the moment. And, um, yeah, it, it, it is kind of shocking. And it, yeah, I mean, I could go on about how dangerous and negative and dark this is leading society. But, um, you know, I, yes. I, oh, I, totally. I, 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 yeah, I, I think it, um, I, I think it, it totally is influencing uh, people and, and new generations. And, um, mm. you know, it's, it's more. It, you know, Sly Stone wrote, uh, everybody is a star. And uh, that was a beautiful sentiment. And it's mm -hmm. true. But but nevertheless, here we are in 2021. And everybody has, you know, you've got yep. your own, you've got your own podcast. And I've got my 100 songs that I do here in my place. And, you know, I mean, it, we all are, uh, uh, all, those of us on social media, we do have... Right. Uh, this presence that our grandparents did not have. It just was, yeah. unless they were like Edward R. Murrow or, or, you know, a, yeah. or this, John F. Kennedy or somebody. That'd be great. But yeah, yeah there, there were, there were only a few, there were only a few uh, celebrities. There were only a few recording artists. There were only a few comics. Mm. Of course, there were millions of all of those, but yeah, but we really only cared about, a handful of each, you know. Right. And, yeah. and now it's there's a million, there's a gazillion, and and I, you know I have to confess that I don't, I no longer follow the uh, pop charts. So mm -hmm. uh, it is, I'm certain it is populated with names and artists and songs that I've never heard and I know nothing about. You know, I'm completely out of that loop. Mm -hmm. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. On in a way, we right. all want to stay up and we want to be current. But I also right. think that you know. But what are you doing with your life? Are you enjoying your life? Start mm -hmm. that farm. Start that farm is what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going right now. <laughs> yeah. I just leave it to talk. <laughs> um, Get up. Glenn Burtnick's right. I just throw everything down, flip the desk. Kind uh, No, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just wanted to ask a quick question. Yeah, so you, sure. you mentioned how like you question, which is amazing to me, right? Because you usually don't hear this from the artist perspective saying, you know, I question, should I have taken that nine to five? Should I have been a normal person? Now, did you enjoy the ride like that you've been on thus far? Like, was it an enjoyable ride? Predominantly, yes. Okay. Um, wasn't as easy as I expected. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's a roller coaster. It, it is a roller mm. coaster. It's really hot, super highs. And then, like my solo career, I got dropped. Like when I got dropped by A and M Records, it was I was you took it so personal. It's right. like, oh my god, they don't want to release my albums anymore. And this is all I ever thought in life that I just make albums, and they would, you know, however they'd go out, they'd be pancakes that the public would buy. But um, <laughs> yeah. but I, you know, uh, and then you get a little more perspective, and you look back and say, that was cool. I, I you know, I made a bunch of records on A and M Records, and Right. And um, and so be it. And it is the journey. And I probably learned more from the times, you know, that I would I was disappointed than you do from the times that like, holy shit, I'm hanging out with Joe Walsh and Paul McCartney or whoever it is. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like it's, it's yeah. sometimes you learn more from the tough times, I think.
I'm getting yeah. philosophical yeah. in my old age, that too. That's I perfect, learned. though. I because then I can learn. Uh, <laughs> how can you teach me, Glenn? Um, <laughs> I, that's all I'm here for. I'm soaking it up. <laughs> you're you're just in hang trouble. On a second. If, okay, go ahead. Internet <laughs> bad. <laughs> no, I'm just not. Just saying, you're no, uh, air writing when I. Yeah, <laughs> just making an yeah. air note. No, you can keep going. Um, <laughs> we, you know, it's crazy you said about the JFK thing. Though I was saying to somebody the other day. Uh, anybody with a cam anybody that grows up with a social media presence and a camera today is like ten times more influential than a JFK because that guy they were impressed that he could work the camera when there was you know what I mean when yeah. TV was brand new and he was going up against uh you know uh the melting hippo Nixon that was you know just sweating on stage um you know Kennedy came off like a champ and it's yeah. crazy to me that when you look at some of these people like I like some of these these people on the on TikToks or whatever they when they hold a camera up it's like it's like a third arm they're just they know what to do and even you know and my, my friends and I grew up I I know what a cassette tape is I still have them um you know I've got VHS and then we slowly grew into internet and stuff right I had CDs I had MP3 players and stuff and then I I've got a a friend of mine who um he's he started doing stand up on Instagram, which by the way, if you know comedians, you know how infuriating that fucking sentence is, right? Like he started doing it on Instagram, you know? So, so he built this following and Ooh. now he gets to go do that, which I don't, begr I mean, I, you know, that works, that works, you know, but, um, it's interesting because it's a five year difference. And that five year difference means that he had, yeah. he had the camera technique down and I'm, you know, just a, fucking nothing uh, <laughs> just infuriating well um, i will say i think that you know every generation does you know there are the people that zip to the top because they adapt and just have a natural inclination toward the the new technology you know yeah. jf jfk had charisma that mm -hmm. uh that worked on camera uh, I, but go back and look at it and it's like, no, it's, it's, you know, but not by today's, uh, Oh values, no. Yeah. But, you know, but back then at that moment and, um, and there's a lot of that, you know, it's like, uh, maybe the Beatles with multi-track recording and maybe, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I don't know, maybe, uh, Michael Jackson with music video or something. I, you know, it's like people that step into the, the, the right spot and they got to, and they get it and they can use it. Uh, there are a lot of comics. Um, Eliza Schlesinger. I was watching her. Uh, I was watching a, a Netflix special of hers. And I'm like, this girl was born for this. She's like this beautiful comic. And she's talking to her generation. And, you know, she's just to kill. She's really funny. And, and she is like, she's better at, um, she's better at, at a Netflix special than most anyway i yeah. won't put anybody down but so so there is that no. i hope i hope that's not bad news but also there is um <laughs> the guy but always it's it's a looking back like the guys that are doing it old school usually have more depth and uh, a little uh, you know god you got to know history to understand how to move forward as well so yeah. if it's if it's yeah. just surface stuff, if it's just yeah. being an influencer by somebody that's just doing makeup or doing TikTok or whatever, you know, funny faces or whatever. Yeah. It's just it's it's just can't last. You know, I wouldn't think that they're really going to develop right. into much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, exactly. That. And it, you're right. They don't last. And you and I have talent. And that's why we're leaving and building a farm. Um, I'm never gonna let this farm thing go. <laughs> by the way, I think I really, I really think we're on to something. So uh, well, yeah. <laughs> just expect I'll your number one yeah. customer. Nobody wants to be a farmer anymore. <laughs> Everybody wants to have a television show. So no. let's. There's a niche right there. Let's jump into that. You know. Yeah, I, 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 I can't. I can't believe. We went back to farming. I'm I'm <laughs> fucking stunned that I came I came back into this. You missed the best on, farming uh, conversation ever, John. You got to watch the video on demand. I yeah, I'm gonna have to watch my own fucking thing <laughs> on the way back on demand.
I'm sorry. I had to tend to the hogs. Uh, that's what I, that's nice. what I heard farmers say, by the way, I Googled nice. it while I was waiting. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry about that, dude. I've, I'm getting this, uh, internet fixed. And, um, this is to prove that I, this is all this, all this is just to prove that I'm not actually a millennial. Oh, you know, I'm, <laughs> That's true. I don't know how the internet works. It's all a bunch of tubes. I, I'm just glad to hear that you're getting the interme- internet fixed. <laughs> because it's been busted for a while and it needs some fixing. Getting the getting the whole internet fixed. Yeah. Um it. hang on, sorry, hang on. No, my this is unbelievable. <laughs> yes. This is gonna be the best I'm outtake real ever. Is... <laughs> John's breakdown interview. <laughs> oh, you've had breakdowns before. <laughs> this is when I, this is when I really, really start to lose it. Oh, Jesus fucking Christmas! So, <laughs> I feel like you know what though. This has been the most honest. I feel like we're getting to know each other. Like this is this is going to be the test of whether you ever want to see me again in person. <laughs> like normally, it's like, how you doing? Why was your career? I'm like, mother fuck! I should just go into full blown. We're going to do a serious one. Ready? I'm going to give you a hard-hitting question. Two of them. Uh, uh, Cartoon Network or Nick at Night or Israel Palestine? Go. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) But you get to choose. (laughs) You get to choose. Yeah. Which one do you want to answer? (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, oh, we, we, wait, oh my that's god the, so are, yeah, yeah I, I, no I, let's not go there yeah who could choose yeah. between nick at night and cartoon network john <laughs> yeah i don't know the difference actually <laughs> you're like i don't know man i love mash but i also love falafel so it's really <laughs> it's a really it's a really tough call uh man yeah anyway i don't know i i missed the whole i'm hope you guys had a lovely we yeah. did. Me and Glenn Good. actually decided that no matter what you ask him from here on out, he's going to be like, I already talked about it. We already <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll see you. Got to go. Bye. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes that make I, I, I deserve it. That makes total sense. You missed you missed probably my favorite story of the whole show is that uh, when he was on stage and they were hosing down the crowd. You missed the good one. Hosing down the crowd. Oh, my yeah. God. You're going to have to go in- back and watch it. That's incredible. I would love to see footage of that if that's possible. Not the interview, but actually hosing down the crowd. See, that's why you needed social media back then. Yeah, <laughs> this was our whole conversation. Was it really? Fucking yep. Christ. What, I'm such a hack right now. I'm like, hey, <laughs> doing material you guys did five minutes ago. <laughs> no, I, I have the... a question. I have a question. Shoot. So are we live right now or is this? Yes. Go- oh, we are. Well, yeah, there's going to be a finished product. So people get to tune in live and watch us during the live one and ch- and chime in every so often. But there's also yep. the podcast version that goes out into Apple and Spotify. Okay. That's going to be it, John's going to look like he didn't miss a beat because he Good. edits okay. it down perfectly. I, yeah, it, it'll be edited clean and, and it'll look fine. And uh, even if I have to superimpose myself later, like <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, thank you. Well, you know, I mean, that's part. I I got that part of the youth appeal, as I can I can Photoshop myself into things. Does uh, this go on YouTube? Is this go on YouTube at all? It goes on YouTube. Yeah, the the um, I also edit that as well. So when once this is done, it goes on YouTube, and um, it usually you know uh um goes on, on Apple. Dystopia tonight. On Dystopia tonight, yeah, on YouTube, and then it goes on Apple, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and those things and it's all wow. it's all cleaned up and edited down yeah wow cool. it's going pretty good i mean i i i didn't ever imagine myself behind a desk i assumed i would be on the road forever <laughs> and i i imagined i would just die there one day no one would find me um and uh and i like i like talking to people. i don't know do you do you like the uh um talking to people on this kind of stuff have you like uh I, actually i would love it if you were like i hate every moment of this uh-huh. uh <laughs> <laughs> but like, did you did you find it like uh, you know annoying, or do you do you like talking to people on the internet? You know, it it, it does depend on who the inter- an interview is only as good as the interviewer. But it's so easy to talk, you know, to, to do yeah. these things. For me, for me, it's just like, sure, I don't know you guys, let's talk. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's okay, uh, you know, and and it's. It's also flattering somewhat because you're asking me about, you know, what I think, you know, even though like what I think is like 
who cares? But uh, no, uh, See, but but whatever, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's really easy and enjoyable. Right. I got no problem. And that, that's the thing that that's awesome. And that's the thing that's cool about that, though. You said, uh, you know, I, I, I liked doing this because I, I do like to know about people's careers and their influences and their lives, stuff like that, too. But I do like getting off on random topics, man, because I want to know, like, you know, I when I growing up, when I liked a a celebrity or a singer or a person or whatever, I just wanted to know what they thought about everything. You know what I mean? Because it was like maybe they have a different yeah, way of thinking. Yeah. Maybe they, you know, maybe there's something I'm not doing. Um, which is everything yeah. apparently. Uh, <laughs> I'm not uh, doing anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that's uh, you. that's been like the the like you know the benefit of uh of again a, a little silver lining in covid even though there isn't really much of any and i've appreciated this interview more than most because i feel like glenn you've been so real like you're a re like yeah it's funny a lot a lot of other people it takes us a long time to get down to the real person right yeah, so but yeah. you're just yourself and i feel like that's refreshing especially when you're dealing with artists who are constantly putting up like some sort of a front where you're just like yeah like you're giving us what your real thoughts are sometimes it takes a little while to weed away the uh like the can dancers veneer yeah, before you get to like the real person, because all we really try to do on the shows is, you know, hang out and talk like talk on a human to human level. And I think people appreciate that as opposed to like the, uh, you know, how like you said before, like how many times can you answer like, oh, when did you do this? How did you do this? So it's it's better to have a real conversation. I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, and we appreciate you. I think it's an amazing it's to me, it blows my mind that you uh, that you're like. I always thought about should I have had a nine to five as a reason? I'm like <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> Which, by the way, was immensely comforting because knowing what you have accomplished and what I haven't, the fact that you're like maybe I should have. I'm like, you know, he's not wrong. <laughs> maybe I need to get out. <laughs> well, you know, all all of these little decisions we make every day, mm -hmm. you know, they they do lead to some. There's consequences for everything, you know, and. And so, yeah, yeah and, and maybe I'm getting reflective, but I, I just look back all the time and say, well, now if I had only bought right. that other car, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, Do you it's very nice. It's very nice what you say about the interviews. Pro, po possibly part of it is that I have done so many interviews in my life. You know, I was mm -hmm. I was in Beatlemania in 1978. Yep. Wow. Um, and then I played Paul then, McCartney. Yeah. And then, and then, and then I, and then I had my solo career on AM records. There was a ton of uh, publicity that I had to go through with that. Then I was in sticks. Then, you know, like mm. all of these things that, at, that at this point I've had a lot of practice. I'll bet you my early interviews, I was trying to be cool. And mm. now I accept that I'm not so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so screw it let's just talk like people you yeah know? But thanks and, i'm glad i'm glad i appear and the best part of that is that's what makes you cool yeah. <laughs> it finally worked yeah. it tips right and i feel like the ones that try to be cool you're like nah that guy wasn't that cool but then when oh. you, you're yourself <laughs> you truly are like oh this guy was a great guy super fun yeah exactly i have i have very little uh uh nerves with you coming on because i i you know just i had a, I had a friend who would interview you and i you know have friends who know you, you know emily grove right very well, love Emily. Yes, she's a really, really good friend of mine. She oh, loves you, so you know, I, I, I'd just known you. I'd heard you were a cool, dude. Other interviews I have with people that are coming on, like I'll go to Tom, like, fuck, man, I don't know if this guy's cool. Like, I don't know if this guy's gonna be nice or, <laughs> like, like I think he. And so far, they've been pretty good, and so and some of them were weird, but uh, <laughs> I have to, I have to tell him about that. Do you, do you know Carl Gottlieb? Yeah, I think I do. I think yeah, the I guy do, who wrote yeah. Jaws. So uh, okay, he, I, I don't know that. If he okay. ever okay. listens to your future interviews, John, he's going to. I know. <laughs> I can't believe you're naming him, but let's see the story. I can't That's either, but I don't. Here, here's here's what here's what COVID's done to me. I have a very I have nothing to lose mentality. I almost called CAA and lost my shit on them the other day because they were a dick to my manager. <laughs> and I was like, I get like an angry parent. I was like, oh fuck. Um, but I decided, uh, against that. You ever get like, you ever get just like inset, like you don't even care who the fuck people are in the business where you're like, why are you a dick? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, is there any benefit you're getting out of putting yourself above other people? I don't know why I get like that, but I do. You're, you're about to ask him to name who was a real dick out there. And he's gonna be like, can we go back to this Israel Palestine question? <laughs> uh, uh, 
I'm not going to ask him that. I won't ask him who's a dick. That's just terrible. He's going to be like you. Uh, <laughs> but no, so this, this is actually kind of a funny thing. So Carl wasn't, Carl was very sweet. He was a very nice guy. But, um, you know, in the, in the beginning when we do this or whatever, my manager like will reach out and be like, hey, you know, if you enjoyed your time on the show, would you mind giving a one or two line like testimonial or quote, just something nice about the show? Sure. Everybody just said great things. Uh, 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 Art Alexicus said nice shit. Like everybody was really cool. <laughs> I, I, I messaged Carl and I go, Hey man, same thing. I said to everybody else, just one or two lines, you know, hope you had a good time. And he, he literally goes, Nope. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, did you not have a good time? Are you, you know where he goes? No, he goes, you're a good interviewer. And I had a really good time. He goes, but my obligation to you has been fulfilled. <laughs> And I was like, I've ne like that was an amazing line. I was like, yeah. I'm like, dude, you're not a genie. I didn't rub a fucking lamp. Like, it's <laughs> like, what, what obligation? But and, and I was like, I, it's not like I won you at a contest either. Like, but I I love that line. It makes me laugh. Like oh, when I think man. about it, so hard. My wow. obligation. Wow. I'm wow. saying that no matter what. Now, like, John just can't wait to use it. I like, can't. He just wants to use it. I can't wait. Like, like when my, my one of my friends is getting divorced, I know they're going to be dumb enough to get married again. I, I'm going to be like, dude, my obligation to you has been fulfilled. <laughs> uh, it's a good line for telemarketing, you know, when you answer the phone. <laughs> right? And you realize what they're selling is like, I'm, I'm done, you know? Yeah. But, but I will say this. That's fair of him. Yes. yes. You know, I thought so honest. too. It's like, you know, all right. Yeah. I had, uh, I had so much. I was like, oh, wow. I, it, it was just, you know, the thing was the wording of it was so I've never, I was like, yeah. that's fucking genius. <laughs> so he's, a, John, he's a writer. Yeah. yeah he wrote uh, the screenplay for Jaws one and two, and then a bunch of other stuff. And he wrote on the Smothers Brothers show with, um, my God, it was Steve Martin. Yeah, Dick Steve Cabot. Martin. Yeah. Uh, Mason, what is, what's his name? Anyway, yes. Yeah. But, uh, oh, I know um, you're, you're talking. Yeah. 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 Great guy. And he was a stand, he tried doing, he was improv and then he tried doing stand up for a little bit, but he was, yeah, he's mostly just a, a great comedy writer and he's a super nice guy, but it was just hilarious. Um, and then he told us about how he doesn't talk to Steven Spielberg anymore. And we were both like, did you tell him your obligation was fulfilled <laughs> after Jaws or? <laughs> Where he'd be like, hey, me and Richard Dreyfus are going to grab a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Carl was like, maybe, honestly, maybe, though. Maybe Spielberg used that line on him and he's been using it ever since. That could. <laughs> oh my God. That's so, that's so much better. That's such a better story. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's just been sitting, festering in his chest. <laughs> wow. I love it. Um, well, I don't want to, I mean, if you, if you want to hang out and talk more, it's been an hour. I'll, I could let you go or you could hang out, whatever you want to do, man. I got more questions for you or whatever you want to do. I, I am totally, I have been enjoying this, but I want to put my wife to bed because she's a school teacher. So, uh, oh, dude, yeah, I, I totally so, understand. So I am going to, uh, my, I believe cool. my obligation. Glenn. I think, been, you, well, I think me, you should have ask explained. You, you should have just said, yeah, my obligation, my obligation has been fulfilled. <laughs> click out. Did you already ask him? Because I'll ask him what we always ask well, people this. No, it's didn't. like the last question. Um, uh, and it's, you know, uh, if you had advice to give your younger self now, what would it be? Oof. Oh. Um, <laughs> or you can answer the Israel Palestine question. It's your choice. Yeah. <laughs> about, about the same. Um, um, I, I would say. Uh, you really don't know as much as you think you know. Ooh, that's the first time anybody said that. I like that. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, life. dude. Seriously, it, I mean, I sorry my internet crapped I mean, out, but it, uh, it was cool. We, we it was we a pleasure, fun. man. Fun. Yeah, awesome. Both of you enjoyed it. You thanks. Did. Thank you yeah, so thanks much. Thanks so much, man. Such a pleasure to meet you. And let's let's let them know before you leave just oh. where you where where they can find, you know, any yeah. anything new that's coming out, where they can find you performing coming up if you are doing anything for this summer. Yeah. Um uh this Sunday night uh um the weaklings are playing uh at, at the the Tim McClune's uh oh. supper supper club in Asbury Park. Yeah. Um, and then in the summer, I have a show called 
the uh, this Glenn Burtnick's Summer of Love, which is like a we we kind of revisit the late '60s, and that's going to be going nice. on at the Ocean Casino in Atlantic City. Sweet. And, and then I'm on the road with uh, Max Weinberg's jukebox, and I'm also on the road with the orchestra. Nice. So I, I don't know. Just uh, look look for my name and buy everything that has my name on it. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And the Weaklings, April Fools is the newest one out. That's they right. Can, they can check that out on Apple. Yeah. yeah. Right there. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks again, man. Really appreciate Thanks. it. It was great talking Thanks, to you. Guys. All the best. Thank you. Dystopia tonight.